to Scrapyard Diecast Racing. As always, I'm your host, Barnabas Tone. And this is me, your co-host, Frederick Allen Seto. Wow, what a crucial race we have today. It's the fastest car in the world versus the most powerful man in the universe. And one of them will win the final spot in the semifinals. Exactly, and that's what makes it crucially. Crucialer? Ah, whatever. It's important. So let's take a closer look at today's racers. Up first, it's a car developed by the late Ben Cranham. It's now in the hands of Oriana Flubb. It's been labeled the fastest car in the world. It's the one and only, the GRX. Then we have... He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Man, I've always wanted to say that. What is that? A green tiger? There's no pets allowed here at the scrapyard. That's not a pet, Barry. That's Battle Cat. I guess you could call him He-Man's daily driver. I bet regular cartoon fans probably thought he'd be in the Road Ripper, but not today. Today, he'll be racing in the Snake Buster. I... I don't even know what you're talking about, Al. Are you still speaking English? See if you could understand this, Barry. Let's stop wasting the fans' time and get up to the guillotine gate to get this race started. Now you're speaking my language. Starting off in lane one, it's the GRX. And in lane two, it's He-Man. I've never seen the Snake Buster on the track, so I have no idea what it can do. But the GRX is rumored to be able to break the sound barrier. I hope he's going to be able to keep that car on the track. <laughs> I'm so excited, Barry. Kill the chipmunk. Three, two, one. Leads. Oh no! Back up, muscle boy! Who said that? GRX into the clunkers! GRX into the wall! He can't get that thing restarted! This one is all over! Wow! What a wild way to start this one, Barry! They both rocket out of the guillotine gate! The Snake Buster might actually be faster than the GRX off the line! It seems that way, Al, because He-Man gets an early lead coming down Nevada. I know he's only a hired racer, but Lewis better step up his game if he wants to earn his paycheck. The GRX has trouble coming into the bottleneck, but not He-Man in that Snake Buster. He power slides his way through. However, He-Man does have a massive amount of trouble in Carmine Corner. You can say it was mountain-sized. Snake Mountain. What are you talking about, Al? It's He-Man. I don't think he can see Snake Mountain without trying to go defeat Skeletor. Skele who? Not Skele who. Skeletor. He-Man's arch enemy. Well, while he decided to play hero, Lewis decided to get it into gear. Reverse gear, that is, because that's how he takes Carmine Corner and the lead. And he's able to kick that car around coming into Clunker Canyon. But he might have overcorrected because he slams into those clunkers causing an amazing avalanche. And it looks like it was just too much for the GRX to handle because he goes pinballing off the walls in the boulevard and can't get that car restarted. I hope Miss Oriana Flubb didn't prepay this driver because she may want her money back. Well, neither the GRX or He-Man was able to make it across the line, so that's a big no on the scorecard for both racers. And just as a reminder, if no one wins after three heats, both racers are eliminated. Here we are back at the guillotine gate for heat two. Looks like the racers decided to keep the same lanes as heat one. Well, let's hope that we don't get the same performance as heat one. We're looking for a win here. I just got word the clunkers have been reset and we're good to go. Good luck to both racers. Three. Again! I have you now, you muscle-bound old Skeletor! Skeletor! GRX across the line! Oh no, watch out! Wow! That was incredible, Barry! I thought we were going to get a repeat of Heat 1. 
it started out the same, but what we got was so much more. Again, He-Man was first off the line coming out of the guillotine. And then he immediately cuts across coming down Nevada, leaving the GRX in his wake. And the GRX almost loses it trying to catch up. How did he not flip over? <laughs> wow, that was a monumental save. And speaking of monuments, again, He-Man is apparently more attracted to Snake Mountain than he is at winning. And also again, the GRX takes Carmine Corner in reverse. Plus, it looks like Lewis was trying to see if the GRX will hit that sound barrier limit going backwards because he's like a missile coming down Clunker Canyon. And he's still gaining speed as he comes down the boulevard and takes the checkered flag. Unfortunately, Al, he takes the finish line cam along with it. With that subsonic display of speed, the GRX puts the first win on the scorecard. He-Man really, really needs to find a way to keep his eyes on the track and off that Cobra Castle. Cobra Castle is G.I. Joe. I think you mean Snake Mountain. Oh, whatever. Here we are, the final heat. He-Man needs a win here to force a tiebreaker. Well, he's opted for the lane change, so let's see what he has planned. Race fans, it could all come down to this heat. So get off your seats, because this heat is a go. Three, two, one, go! He-Man leads! Ah! The GRX loses it! Stop him, you He-Man makes it through! Upside down? Will he make it? Oh, so close! This one is all over! <laughs> I can remember when I've had a more pleasant day! <laughs> wow, Barry! I really thought He-Man was gonna take this one. He was 3 for 3 in being the first one out of the guillotine gate. And again, he kept the GRX at bay coming down Nevada by cutting out in front. But, while he gets a little unstable in the bottleneck, it's the GRX who goes swooping off track! And He-Man goes into Carmine Corner, following your advice, Barry! Literally! How so, Al? During the scorecard, was it not you who said, He-Man needs to keep his eyes off Snake Mountain and keep them on the track? Well, he did! By literally keeping his eyes on the track, he fought off his temptation to fight off Skeletor! Fortunately, he had built up enough speed to scrape his way through the rest of the race. Unfortunately, it must be pretty hard to steer when you're upside down and backwards, and he just taps that last clunker in Clunker Canyon. And that lines him up with the outside wall in the boulevard, and that just further slows down the most powerful man in the universe. It's a shame He-Man was driving, and not Mechanek, because he would have been able to stretch his neck across the line and force a tiebreaker. Mecha who? Oh, never mind, Barry. He's just the coolest guy after Trapjaw. Unfortunately, the most powerful man in the universe's neck was too short, and he couldn't force a tiebreaker. And with the GRX seemingly leaving the track early to go pick up his check, no one put a win on the scorecard for this heat. But with one previous win, the GRX is still tonight's winner. And while he'll be sending He-Man back to Eternia, he'll be sending himself into the last spot of the semi-finals, where he'll face the boss of the Gang of Assassins, Assassin number one. However, before that, it'll be race one of the semi-finals, where Raphael takes on Speed Buggy. And don't forget, there's still my super secret bonus at the end of it all, but you're gonna have to wait for that one. Until then, this is your host, Barnabas Tone, saying thank you for watching. Please leave us a comment if you enjoyed today's race. And this is me, your favorite co-host, F. Allen Seto, saying good night and thanks for watching. And please be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you won't miss the next race or any race.